Hey guys, this is Desiree and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing The Real by Kate Stewart. So I remember mentioning this in my April TBR list and I didn't really get to show you guys the amazing cover because Goodreads didn't let me zoom in, but it is beautiful. I mean, look at the detail of this. It's gorgeous, right? I mean, look at the detail of this cover. It's so just well done. I love it. I fucking love this cover. Yes, I am one of those people who's a huge sucker of book covers. I will one-click a book just because the cover is pretty, because it's pretty. So this was one of my most highly anticipated releases of the month. I know that she did have to push uh, the date back just a little bit. I don't think it was too long, but I believe it was supposed to come out slightly earlier. But April 17th is still really, really good. It Again, it was one of my most highly anticipated reads of the month, and I ended up getting an arc for it, which I was fucking giddy over. Kate Stewart is one of my new all-time favorite authors. Drive is my all-time favorite novel just in the history of novels because that book was something else. I will leave my review for that down in the description box below for those of you who are interested. For those of you who haven't read it, just trust me. Just trust me. It made my number one spot 2017. Right now, it's my number one spot for my favorite book ever. It's just that amazing. There is something about Kate Stewart where she kind of reminds me a lot of Emma Scott's effect on me where their writing is so unique and it's so emotionally evocative. These are not light and fluffy reads. I don't think we really get light and fluffy reads from Emma or um, Kate Stewart, but she has that pull on me, that effect on me. You know, there are just those authors where you read them and they just suck you in and there's something that stays with you with their books. With every single one of their books, there's something that just hits that sweet spot for you, something that you connect to on such a profound level. I just love this author and I was giddy over getting an arc for it. And with that being said, let's get into the blurb. They say it happens when you least expect it. It did for me. It started the moment I saw the simple message pop up on my computer screen. Cameron's Mac. Hi. And when I met the eyes of the gorgeous man messaging me from across the coffee shop, I never thought my reply would lead to the most intense sexual and passionate relationship of my life. We both agreed to check our bags at the door and put our future hopes and aspirations on the table. It worked. I fell in love with his no-holds-barred attitude, sexy smirk, and undeniably good heart. And for a while, we forgot about our baggage. We happily tripped over it to get to the other, neither of us willing to show the contents of our past in the off chance it would ruin us. We built our love on a foundation of gray. It was life in black and white that threatened to tear us apart. Just with that blurb alone, you know it's going to be intense. Now, this is a very different book from Drive, which personally, I love. You can never write the same book twice. Drive is just beautiful on its own. This book is entirely different. However, it made me feel just as powerfully as Drive did. I don't know if anybody else has experienced it, but where you read a book and you feel almost like that book was written for you, just some of the aspects of that novel just hit you so personally and you can connect to it so well. That's what happened in Drive and that's what happened with The Real. There are so many aspects about this book that I really connected to from the very depths of who I am. I just connected to this book. I did not expect for this to be an intense book like Drive was. I knew it wasn't going to be a light and fluffy read. I can tell that from reading the blurb alone, but I didn't think it was going to be as intense as it was. And let me tell you guys right now, Kate Stewart is just fucking magnificent. I've said it like 50 times already in the five minutes that I've been recording this. I'll say it again. She is magnificent. So our heroine's name is Abby. She likes to frequent this little coffee shop in Chicago. It's kind of her uh, respite from the rest of the world. She's had a few bad experiences that have left her sort of paranoid in some sense. She's kind of always looking over her shoulder. She really doesn't trust people because of the last bad experience that she's had. And then she gets this pop-up message from a man across the way named Cameron. Apparently people with MacBooks can sense other Macs and you can kind of message them. I don't know. I don't own a Mac. I've always been a PC and Android girl. So Mac is an entirely foreign creature to me. Just don't understand it. She ends up messaging Cameron back. He is absolutely stunning. He's got this to die for smirk, but she's still got a lot of reservations 
and she denies him uh, when he says, hey, can we go out or can I buy another cup of coffee? But then she begins to wonder, you know, maybe I don't need to be afraid of this guy. I don't, not everybody is out to get me. So she does end up giving him another chance and they actually start the relationship off not speaking to each other. They start off just instant messaging on their computers. And this was sort of a new innovative way to get to know whether or not one another where they're not physically involved yet, so you can't go too far too fast. And she says, you know what, I, I, I kind of just want to leave our baggage at the door. You know, let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be because at that point, neither one of them had any idea where it was going to go. And they both agreed. They're not going to discuss their past and that's that. But they don't expect to fall so hard for one another. And for each of these characters, they both have a lot of things that are holding them back personally. There's something about being around each other that just makes them feel safe and makes them feel loved. Now, what I will say is that the first half or so of the book may seem like it's going a little bit slow but guys stick with the book it is being built up that way for a reason i can definitely see a first time reader picking up this book and going all right i'm such and such way through the book nothing's really happening there's no angst yet you know what's going on guys just stick with it. It's all for a purpose. Kate Stewart is very, very strategic. This book is built up that way for a reason. The story is very, very three-dimensional. This story, kind of in a similar way to Drive, is all about the character development. Yes, it is all about Cameron and Abby falling in love, but it's about them evolving and them, you know, working past and fighting their demons and sometimes you can't really do that together you have to be able to do that somewhat on your own someone can help you get there but ultimately the deed is your own to to finish you have to be able to push past your own demons you have to be able to be honest with yourself you have to trust yourself and none of that is going to happen you can't love somebody else until you fully love and understand and trust yourself first and that's one of the reasons why kate's books they just they speak to my soul i fucking love this book if you ask me to choose between this and drive i can't do it these are two completely separate books but they made me feel just as powerfully and profoundly this is a beautiful story and there were moments in here i was ugly crying hard actually there was a point in this book where I actually had to put my Kindle down because I was crying. I was, I, I could not see past my fucking tears. That's how intense it was because of a very personal connection that I had with this book. And Cameron is my favorite hero, one of my favorite heroes of all time now. I just fucking loved him. And what I will say about Cameron is it kind of goes beyond him being a favorite book boyfriend of mine because it doesn't feel like that's quite enough because in novels, I think in contemporary novels, as female readers, we want to be attracted to the hero. We want to be best friends with the heroine. That tends to be, you know, how we sort of categorize them. And with Cameron, though, I wasn't, it wasn't about the attraction. It was about how much I connected to him. And he is a very, very special hero in that way. One unlike I've ever read before because I've never connected on such a deep and profound level with a male character before. I can do that with the female characters, but I've never had that connection with a male character before. It was astounding. And you can just feel that this book came from Kate's heart and soul. You can tell that she put her all into this book and it shows so stunningly. These are three-dimensional characters in a three-dimensional story and it's very unconventional from the way they meet and start talking throughout the entire story. This is not your run-of-the-mill contemporary romance. This is something that is very different and that's one of the reasons why I love it. It's so unique and honest and Kate Stewart 
is an author who is authentic to herself. She is authentic to her books. She knows that she's probably not going to write something that's exactly run of the mill, but at the same time, she will write it because it, it is honest. And that's how you create novels that people connect to. That's how you create novels that people remember. And the writing itself is so absolutely stunning. I mean, when she is describing a, a cafe, a coffee shop, you are in that coffee shop. You can fucking smell the coffee. It is brilliant. Her imagery is so gorgeous. And how she makes you feel when you're connecting to, the, to these characters, when you're seeing their relationship build and build, and when you're seeing them really grow and really love each other and really fall into each other. But then that's not always what love is about. Love is also about accepting each other's flaws and being able to be there for each other through the thick and the thin. You know, it's, it's, it's a growing experience. It's a journey being in love with somebody. And it's not always perfect. I love that. That's a, that's a commonality that I would say Drive and The Real have together is that it does showcase the fact that love is not perfect. And love can make mistakes. Love can come at the wrong time. Love can come in a very inconvenient moment in your life when you're not really ready for it. It happens. And again, that's what I love about her writing is that there is a huge level of authenticity in the book where you feel how genuine she is, how genuine the words are. And I truly felt from the bottom of my soul like Kate was speaking for my soul. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's the truth for me. There was something that I connected to with both Drive and to this book in particular that just made me feel something while I was reading it. I felt so connected to it. It's a very powerful book in a totally different way, but still powerful nonetheless. I loved this book so, so much. It's my favorite read of the month, one of my favorites of the year. It's just absolutely incredible. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are not ready to see some more videos from me and I will see you guys later. Bye.